Hi, this is James with Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. Today I have Jason with us. We're going to talk about breakers, overcurrent protection, and when to use them, how to use them, various concepts around overcurrent protection in general. What is a breaker used for? A breaker is used for opening a circuit in the event of an overcurrent event. Okay, all right, so an event like maybe a product fails, or a bad connection poor connection, something that would cause an electrical wire potentially to see more current than it was designed for. Right, and right? it'll trip usually based on heat or based on a, a heavy draw coming through. The breaker. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, so in our industry, a solar industry, we have basically two kinds of breakers, right? So being that we have AC and DC applications, we have AC and DC breakers, right? right. What is the difference between an AC and DC breaker? Uh, the way that the arc is extinguished when the breaker trips and the trip mechanism itself is different in an AC and DC breaker. Okay, all right, so maybe we should uh, show what this looks like. Let's illustrate an AC waveform. So here we have alternating current and here we have direct current. Essentially, we can just assume that both of these have the same voltage potential between here and here. Let's just say, for sake, it's uh, 120 volts. <clears throat> so which of the two of these breakers, let's just assume there's a breaker on each of these circuits, which of the two of these breakers would have a high arc? The direct current break. Why? Because uh, every time this passes zero, this line zero. represents zero volts, right. right? Okay, so we got zero volts, and then this is what negative one twenty. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're saying so every time this passes zero, we have no no arc there. We have no current flow. No current flow. Right. So sixty times a second, an AC circuit goes to zero volts, which naturally would extinguish an arc. However, on a DC circuit, like this one at 120 volts, it never hits zero. And so if we want to basically open this circuit, we have to take this to zero potential, which will cause an arc. Within a tiny little breaker like this, that arc can be pretty big if the circuit is a high voltage, like 120 volts, or 300 volts, or 600 volts. And so, these breakers have a specific means for disconnecting that helps extinguish the arc that would be produ produced here when disconnected. Let's talk about DC breakers since we're on this subject. We've got a few different types here. We have DIN rail type breakers, okay? We have panel mount breakers and we have so surface mount, surface mount breakers. Okay. So one of the more common breakers that we use uh, in our industry is for panel combining in combiner boxes. And they'll use something like a 150 volt breaker or a 300 volt breaker. Now these are DIN rail breakers. They're designed to fit onto a piece of DIN rail. They basically clip in. There's like a little clip on the back of the breaker. And they'll clip into the piece of DIN rail and that holds them in place. And often these pieces of DIN rail are mechanically fastened within an enclosure. So this is just a little breaker box, for example, an indoor breaker box. The breaker just clips in on this piece of DIN rail here. This would obviously be mounted to a wall or a panel or something like that. And then uh, it will have a cover that can go on it and allow you to not have any in any contact to you know, where the wires connect, the termination points, okay? I just noticed there's a positive and negative on this breaker. What does that mean? On this particular one, there's just a positive, but on this one, there's a positive and negative. Right, and it doesn't represent a positive and negative wire or a positive and negative side of the circuit. It represents where the higher potential needs to sit when the breaker is turned off. Right, so typically, DC breakers are what we we call in this industry polarity specific or polarity conscious. 
And that has nothing to do with the positive and negative aspect of the circuit. The negative will still just go straight to the load, but it has to do with the voltage potential and where it sits on the breaker. So plus pluses typically indicate, or they do indicate, where the positive uh, high potential terminal is connected. And the negative is where the low potential would be. For example, if you had a solar array and it was 300 volts, the solar array is going to have the high potential. The chart, the output from the breaker to the charge controller is going to be the low potential. The low potential goes on the negative, and the high potential from the solar array goes on the positive. Almost always that happens on the bottom of the breaker. This is a 300 volt breaker. There's a, a bus in between uh, each side of this breaker. The positive high potential goes in on the plus plus side, down, around, and comes back out on the negative negative side. These are polarity conscious as well. They just indicate line and load. Same concept. Your line is your high potential. Your load is your low potential. Imagine you want to turn off loads. Loads are the low potential side. The line is what provides the power in to the load. Right? Right. right. Panel mount breakers, they'll usually mount within a load center like this. So these little doors will come out and the little screws here will screw into the front of the panel as opposed to a DIN rail breaker that clips in to a piece of DIN rail. Oh, this is a panel mount as well, except this has a different lug style. Uh, the, this is a stud style where you'd use a ring terminal to mount or to attach the wire to the breaker. And then this has a lug in, lug out. So you would just use bare wire going into that. Yeah, so this is uh, often used in Schneider load centers. Um, these panel mount breakers are very often used in outback load centers. In the case of most DC breakers, it's safe to assume that a DC breaker can be used for an AC circuit, but an AC breaker cannot be used for a DC circuit. For example, this is a home line breaker, fits in a regular electric fuse panel essentially, you would definitely not want to use this in a DC circuit, right? What would happen if you use it in a DC circuit? Uh, you would probably, it might work a couple times, but you would probably weld the contact shut, making it totally useless. So that would fail in an unsafe position, right? and likely as a result of an overcurrent event, right? which would be very bad. So, Which is it's its job to prevent. Yeah. So. The obviously important thing to consider is the voltage input limits on a breaker. So breakers have a voltage input limit and that particular limit should always be observed. This breaker is an AC breaker from Outback. Um, it's used inside their load centers. Each pole of this breaker, being that it's a two pole breaker, is rated for 120 volts AC. Uh, so this is an AC breaker that was a demo but it, it shows you what's inside of an AC breaker. It's, uh, the, the trip mechanism is a bimetal strip, and so when that heats up, it bends, causing the breaker to trip, opening the contact. So you can see it actuate, there it goes. So this is a surface mount breaker. Uh, what's important to note about these particular breakers is they have a voltage input limit. So these are rated at 48 volts max, and should not ever exceed that. So yeah, this is basically suitable for 12 volt and 24 volt applications, but because it has a maximum voltage limit of 48 volts, you would not want to use it on a 48 volt system because often you're charging 48 volt systems at 50-ish, 55 volts, and that's definitely greater than what this breaker can handle. If you have any questions about breakers, I'm sure we can answer them. Uh, if you have any help sizing a breaker for a particular application, or sizing wire, it's really important that basically your breakers and your wire size corresponds correctly in a safe way. The whole purpose of a breaker is to basically keep your wire from lighting up like a light bulb. So um, make sure that you size everything appropriately and if you have any reason or question or any doubt or questions about what you're doing, feel free to give our team a call and we can you know, help assist you with putting that solution together. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, and comment.